And welcome. I am Bev Ford from the AIM Center, and I am here with my colleague, Scott. And at the AIM Center, we're committed to working towards a more equitable world through math and science education. You can learn more about our work by visiting our website at aimcenter.org. We would love to hear from you today through the chat feature. So if first you could make sure that your chat is set to everyone, that will help you see what everyone is saying. We know you have great ideas and we want everyone to be able to learn together today. Today, we're gonna to be exploring how coding can relate to playing with sound. Scott is going to start us off with a playful question. Yeah, hi everybody, uh, glad to see you. Thanks for being here today and um, a uh, question to start with, I like thinking about sound, and that is what is a sound that always makes you smile? So every time you hear it, it brings a smile to your face. So not necessarily a song. So here's an example. I have a little chihuahua dog, and every time she jumps in my lap, I scratch her ribs, and when I scratch her ribs, she makes this little sigh whimper sound that makes me smile every time she does it. So think about that for a moment. And when you come up with a sound that always makes you smile, go ahead and put that in the chat, uh, just kind of as a way to say hello and uh, see who's in the room. If you need a moment to think about that, let's talk also about what you might need for today's um, webinar. So just a few simple things. Uh, you'll want some paper, some scissors, and then some what I'm calling breakable units. So for example, I'm gonna have some toothpicks. You might use some craft sticks, maybe some uh, pieces of spaghetti. I have some spaghetti here. So things that can just kind of break easily. Um, and maybe even a straw that you could cut with a pair of scissors. You'll want a, a piece of paper and maybe a pencil or a pen. And then later on, we're gonna use some various items that we can find around us. Uh, we'll kind of get to that in a little while when we take a play break. Um, then you could, might, might have some snack items. In fact, uh, I'll show you my camera here. I have some chips, I have some popcorn, I have some leaves from the garden, I have found some acorns. Uh, so really kind of anything uh, that you just have laying around and multiple objects of those things. So not like just one piece of popcorn or one leaf or one acorn or one chip. You'll probably want a few of those things. Um, also, we're going to ask you uh, at different times to share during a Padlet, uh, share during the presentation, during uh, going into our Padlet. And you'll see that on the screen right now, there's a link to that. And then at various times, and I think it's getting thrown in the chat right now also. Um, so we'll try to make that available throughout the presentation. And you might wanna even open that now just to kind of have that ready, maybe a little spare window on the side of your screen. So for right now, uh, go ahead and enter what I call your smiley sound into the chat and we'll give you a few minutes to gather the materials that you'll need. 
So I'm already seeing like laughter and children's laughter, beach waves. Oh, what a great one. I can just hear <laughs> Cayucas. I can hear Cayucas waves right now. <laughs> That's what yes. My, my we had a we had an owl hooting too, which I thought that was that sounded nice. great. I I don't normally hear an owl a lot, but obviously for this person, they're they're near that and they can hear that. Yeah. And birds, a baby giggling. That I don't know how you could not smile if you hear a baby giggling. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember when my son was less than a year old and he was just so easy to tickle on when I would change his diaper. And he just had this giggle that just made me smile. And I just thought to myself, I want to hear that every day, as long as he's living in my house. Now, mind you, he's much larger now. He's 16, but I did tickle him last night and I still love hearing that sound. <laughs> And I'm sure he's very happy that you're sharing the fact that he wore diapers on the internet right now. So <laughs> oh, I won't be telling him that. <laughs> awesome. But the, but the great um, thing is sounds are all around us. I mean, whether it's cool. animals, the waves, I mean, nature makes sound. When, when the wind blows and you hear the rustling of the trees, I like listening to rain as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds are everywhere. And we're going to play with some of those today. So thank you everybody for sharing those sounds. And that does bring us to today's big idea. So we're going to be talking specifically about sounds and we're going to tinker and play with generating sounds and some sound patterns and how we might turn those into visual codes in various ways. So when we think about musical codes, most of us probably think of something like what's on the screen right now. It's a traditional Western system that has black notes and lines and all kinds of little mysterious symbols that musicians know about. And that's a way of writing symbols that inform musicians how to play or sing. So that's kind of what I think about when I think about a musical code. However, there are actually many other cultures that have their own way of writing codes to represent sounds. So some of those are going to come on the screen right now. So here we've got some from the Middle East. We've got some from China. I think that bottom left is India. And even the Braille community has a way of coding sounds so that uh, musicians who are here uh, visually impaired can still read the code and produce a desired sound. Now, code, uh, but, yeah. So for Go code, ahead. we're talking about it in a really broad term. I, I know a lot, a lot of times teachers, I mean, in my first experience, code was like what a computer did. Like if I, I was thinking about coding. So if you had to like, like what would be that broad, like loose definition of code? Because for some people, if you don't have a musical background, maybe musical code, those words don't normally come together. Sure, that's a great question. So I would think of it this way and, and really tying it to that computer idea. Uh, I have a friend who is a computer coder. He worked for Amazon for a long time. And um, the code he put into the computer generated some kind of physical action. Uh, whether it showed up on a screen or in a spreadsheet or something like that. And really, if we think about musical code, it's the same thing. There's some abstract symbols written on a page and they symbolize some kind of action to take, whether that's hitting a drum or singing a note or and, and a lot of that musical code tells you how long to sing, how loud to sing or play um, and when to stop and when to not play. So maybe thinking of code as some kind of a symbol, symbolic representation of uh, physical activity. Awesome. That, that kind of put it in a nutshell? Yeah, yeah. And I wanted, I mean, I know for myself, coding was really intimidating when I first began to learn about it as an educator. But when I realized some of the, some of the things that I was doing that really have that same concept around it, um, it really kind of changed my disposition towards it. And so 
And depending on whether our audience is musically inclined or not, no worries, because today's content is for everyone. And what we're trying to do is really kind of take coding and make it very accessible and some simple activities that we can do that are really fun for kids. Absolutely. Yeah. So great question. So um, we talked about some some non-Western kind of codes. Uh, I have some actually examples of even in the Western um, culture, there's some interesting artistic and non-traditional ways to visually represent sound. So uh, I just did a quick uh, internet search for some images and believe it or not, those three things on the screen, that's actually a musical code. That's um, amazing. That artists, yeah, artists have come up with some different ways to tell musicians how to play. Now, to be fair, I don't think the music that comes out of that code is what we would call like really traditional. It's not Beethoven. It's probably some pretty avant-garde, uh, different sounding music. Um, but those are musical codes. So it doesn't have to be dots on lines on a page like we always think about. Um, so today we're going to tinker and play with some ways of generating sounds and making some corresponding codes. And one of the things that we like to do on our hands online is to ask the question, where is the steam? So if you are new to our, our webinars, we like to look for the science, the technology, the engineering, the art and the math that's happening in these experiences. And one of the things that I think is really important to remember is technology is not just digital technology. So often we think about technology and we think about like computers or smartphones, but te te technology can be as simple as just a tool. I brushed my hair today. The brush is a tool that's been created over the years to help me make my hair stay down. Um, and then engineering is another one that I think often we think of an engineer, um, someone that's like constructing something or a career, but I like to think of the word as like a design because that's kind of that broad idea. So when you think about music and design, there's so many different rhythms and patterns and we'll explore some of those today. So what's some of the designing that you do um, as you're experiencing these activities? So. Keep your eye open and we'll be talking more um, at the end of our time today. But I'd also love to invite you to throw in the chat and just say when you're noticing some science or some engineering or art or math happening. All right. Awesome. Well, let's get started. We've done enough talking. Let's start playing. Um, so we're going to start with just a piece of paper. And like Bev said, the you know technology doesn't have to mean you plug it in. There was a point in time where paper was the latest, greatest technology in the planet. So uh, yeah. take a piece of paper and uh, we're just gonna cut a strip. And you could cut that strip of paper either along the long side or the short side, doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut mine today to start with on the short side just so I can make sure it fits in the camera. Um, so just cut a strip of paper and then we're going to fold that paper in half. So let's just fold half ways here. And then I'm going to fold in half again. So when I unfold this, I'm going to notice that I have a strip of paper that has four sections. Now, you don't need to do this. You can probably see the creases, but I'm going to mark the creases on my paper so that they show up on the camera a little bit better. At least I hope they're showing up a little bit better. Can you see those? Not Maybe really. I'm the gonna... lighting's pretty glary. Okay. Tell you what, let me get a different pen and see if I can fix that real quick. How about that? I need a bigger pen. And here we go. How's that? That works. That mu that's much better. Yeah. Okay. So I have a strip of paper that has four sections. And I'm going to go ahead and number those. So I'm going to number those one, two, three, and four. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to invite you to read along with me. And we're going to start off really basic here. And we want to notice something that happens with these sounds. So read along with me. We're just going to read these numbers and we'll read them several times kind of in a looping pattern. So I'm just going to read one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And as we do that, um, we kind of notice that almost automatically we fall into kind of a rhythm. And that rhythm has a repeating pattern. So let's try again and we'll, let's just pay attention to the rhythm of those words. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to do a lot of different counting and rhythmic counting today and we're going to stick to fours and there's a real good reason for that. The reason is most of the music we hear, whether you turn on the radio or you play your favorite streaming music, I'm going to age myself if you play a vinyl record or a compact disc, um, most of the music, I would probably say 95 to 98 percent of the music that we hear is counted either in fours or eights or twos. And there's actually a really good reason for that is because it feels good. And the reason it feels good is because we have two feet. And so when if we're just marching, if we're walking, we're going to left, right, left, right, one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, and so on. So any groups of two or even numbers feel really good. So just to keep things simple today, I mean, we could have folded our paper into fives or sevens or thirteens, but it just wouldn't have felt as good because of our two feet. So we're going to stick with fours today. All right. So let's do that again and uh, take another strip of paper. I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to take another strip of paper. Cut it again. And I'm going to fold it again into fours. I'm going to do something just a little bit different this time. I'll unfold this. Now I'll mark off my four sections. I'm not going to number them just yet. Okay. So I'm going to ask somebody in the chat to pick one of those sections, the first, second, third, or fourth. So the first one in gets to choose what we're going to do next. So somebody just put in the chat a one, two, three, or a four. Oh, we got three. That one came first. Okay. So we're going to take this third section and I want to fold just that third section in half again. Okay. So let's see. That was one, one. You're the winner for so far today. Okay. So one is directing our play right now. Now, again, just so we can see this, I'm going to put a little dashed line here so we know that that's kind of our halfway. Now, I'm going to number these this way. One, here's two. Now, this is the third section, but we're going to call this three, and we're going to say this is and four. Okay. Now, I'm sorry if that was a little, I'm kind of writing upside down, so pardon my handwriting. So now we have one, two, three, and four. Okay. So now let's take that pattern and read it a few times and notice and, and maybe even think about the mathematics that's going on here. Not only are these uh, whole sections, uh, the rhythm is going to go a little longer 
but they're actually physically bigger than these others. And think about fractional thinking and how students might understand fractions this way. So let's just read this rhythm a few times and listen, see, see what kind of pattern rhythmically you hear. So here we go. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Once more. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So now that we have that rhythm, I'm wondering if we could, instead of saying it, I wonder if we could possibly clap that rhythm. So if I say that again, one, two, three, and four. If I clap that rhythm, one, two, three, and four. And go ahead and clap. And if you're in your room alone, great. What's the shirt that everybody wears says? Like, dance like nobody's watching. Well, everybody just pretend nobody's watching right now. And if your family's around, invite them to join in. All right, so let's try it again. So one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Now let's, let's keep that rhythm going and maybe not vocalize the sound. Absolutely. Now, Laura, I see you in the chat. You put just like musical note values. Exactly. That's and you're actually referring to the code that we referred to earlier. The, that kind of traditional Western black notes on lines code. And there are musical notes values in that. And they very much are related to fractions. OK, so what if we made that even a little bit more interesting by um, not only making a clap uh, pattern, but what if we substituted some physical actions? Like what if on the big pieces we made a stomp and then on the small pieces the three and oh, I should probably change my camera here on the three and what if we did a clap and then this is a big section again so we'll stomp now, I don't know how well this will come over the speakers here so let's try that. So remember our rhythm, one, two, three, and four. And if we just clapped, it would be one, two, three, and four. But now if we stomped with those, let's see. Stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. Clomp, oh, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. Stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we've just done some real simple musical coding that gives us some physical directions of what to do. And I'm going to I'm going to highlight something that I had never really thought about until I started playing and, and planning for this webinar that whether we're dancing or playing an instrument, or singing, or even just talking, those are all physical activities. Dancing is obviously moving, playing an instrument. I play guitar, which involves moving your arm. I play drums, which involves my hands and feet. I play piano, which involves my fingers. But even if you're singing, there's some very physical things that are happening with your mouth and your lungs and your vocal cords. Or even if you're uh, if you enjoy listening to rap music, there's some very rhythmical and physical things that are happening. So it doesn't matter what kind of physical music is happening, but it's all musical. And I had never really made those connections before. So let's do this. Um, let's kind of play together and we'll let somebody else direct our play again. So cut another strip. And what if we 
folded a couple of our pieces smaller this time. So somebody else in the chat, um, tell us which, let's do two, which two sections should we fold smaller and see what rhythm we get? All right, Sandra says two and four, awesome. Sandra, you're the winner now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna make my, whoops, keep forgetting to switch my camera. Okay, so we're gonna do two and four. We're gonna fold those into different halves or smaller halves. And again, I'm just gonna put a little dotted line there so you can see my half markings. Okay, so this is going to be one, here's two, and three, let's see, three is that way, I think, yeah, three is that way, and then four, and. Okay. So let's say it and see what kind of rhythm we hear. We have one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, should we try clapping that? Let's just try clapping it. About one, two, and three, four, and one, Two and three, four and one, two and three, four and. Okay. How about, let's see, somebody oh, put in Scott? the chat. Yeah, go ahead. I couldn't help but notice, just because Sandra mm -hmm. chose those numbers, that there's actually, like this is almost an example, example of equivalent fractions because we could have just we could just fold it down to one two and and it would sound the exact same that's a good observation so watch what we can actually do if we cut that and we i think this is what you're saying that we can yep. match these up that these are the whole beats or the whole bigger parts and then we have the halves that correspond with each other absolutely right now what if we took our other piece and put it here and what if we played this piece of music one two and three four and stomp stomp clap clap stomp <laughs> should we try that <laughs> Uh, so we could say, in fact, you know what, let's go back to the, the chat and participants. How about somebody put in the chat, what should we do for this first motion here? There's all kinds of things. We could snap, we could, woohoo, we could jump, we could clap our hands, we could slap our legs. Anybody want to put in the chat an idea of what you want us to do? Ooh, Hershey, Hershey, I'm assuming you meant Hershey bars. Yeah, not Hershey bats. <laughs> yeah, Hershey bars are great for fractions, but who knew that Hershey bars could be great for music, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Cortison, you were first in with woohoo. So we're gonna tell you what, let's make the woohoo go right here. So woo, and then this'll be our who, okay? And let's do the same thing here. So, because woohoo kind of comes down to two syllables, and that's actually getting ahead of the game just a little bit. And how about this will be slap legs? Okay, and I'm just going to write legs here. Legs. 
Okay. So we're going to go legs. Woohoo! Legs. Woohoo! Stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. Okay. This is going to turn into like a coordination test here. So let's try this. We'll kind of keep it slow. Here we go. Legs. Woohoo! Legs. Woohoo! Stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. All right, let's just keep repeating that over and over. Legs. Woohoo! Legs. Woohoo! Stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. Legs. Woohoo! Legs. Woohoo! Stomp, stomp, clap, clap, stomp. Once more, legs. Woohoo! Legs. Woohoo! Stomp. Stomp, clap, clap, stomp. All right. I feel hey, like we're, I was we're... dancing. And why not? I yeah, think we absolutely. were making up our own dance. Who knew that we, we could make up a dance? I would never we claim that. A dance. We made up a dance, we've made up a song, and we've coded it like this. That's our code. Okay. How fun. You guys are great. Um, in the um, Padlet, I don't know if anybody has that open. If you wanted to make your own code using just strips of paper and folding different things and assigning different values, at any time, if you want to take a picture of that and put it in the Padlet, um, there's a section there right far on the far left that is paper and movement patterns. So all you have to do is click the little plus sign under that left column. And if you want to put a picture in there, that would be great. Um, so feel free to do that. Yeah, Chris in the chat, put the uh, link again. And yeah, if you want to add your own picture, so that's the one we coded and, and made together. Um, do your own and put it in there at any time. So let's try this one more time. But what if, what if we switched from paper to some other object? So what I mean by that is what if, let's see, I have here some toothpicks. And this is where we came into the breakable objects. So this could be spaghetti, it could be could be tortilla chips, it could be a straw, it could even just be another strip of paper that you can can tear apart or cut. And what if we translated this code into toothpicks? So for example, for every whole count section here, I'm going to use a whole toothpick. But when we get to these smaller pieces, what if I broke the toothpick? And that represents the smaller pieces. So now our code, instead of paper, we can code with toothpicks. And I think the light is glaring right where those are. So let me move that a little bit. I'm sitting right by a window that's glaring on the table I'm at. So here we have our stomp, our stomp, our clap, clap, and our stomp. So we're just translating this code into a different kind of code. And one now, of the things that I, I noticed too is like, when you have the words written there, the actual written language is like a code. It helps you remember. Right now, if you take that paper away, I just have to remember that a full toothpick means a stomp and that a half a toothpick means a clap. But that's kind of, I mean, that's a great example of coding. I mean, there's so many buttons on our phones that are codes and kids at a really young age learn if I push this button, this action or behavior is going to happen. Absolutely. And Laura, great comment. Yeah, it's like a binary code. Absolutely. And not only that, um, we could, what if we not only would a whole toothpick represent something, 
But what if we change the direction? What if we said every time the toothpick is vertical, it's a stomp, and every time it's horizontal, it's a clap? So now we have kind of a double code going on. So this is a whole beat, but it's a stomp because the toothpick is vertical. These are horizontal, so those are claps, but they're also shorter. And then this one's a clap still because it's still horizontal. I would have to maybe even make a key here that uh, whenever this, whenever they're this way, it's a stomp. I can't write upside down that well, so I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> so that's a stomp. And horizontal means clap. And what if we did diagonal means snap? Oh boy, that's a lot of layers, Scott. You're, you're, you're really confident in our capabilities today. I hope everyone's feeling confident. <laughs> Yeah, so here's the key, and here's our objects. We could, I mean, I could just go crazy with this. We could, there's a code. Could we play that? <laughs> so the, the full toothpicks means a full beat. The smaller toothpicks means a smaller rhythm, a faster rhythm but the direction also changes the action that we take based on the code. So what we're gonna do, and is having thrown that idea out a little bit, we're gonna take a little five minute play break. And I'm gonna uh, invite you to make up your own code, make up a key for different uh, activities, and you can use whatever you wanna use, use toothpicks or spaghetti or uh, again, even just strips of paper, or maybe even just write it on paper, and come up with a rhythm of some kind and share it in the Padlet and see what you can come up with. So we'll be quiet for about five minutes, and I'll put a timer on the screen, and we'll have a little play break. So have fun and enjoy. All right, well, let's come back together And again, anytime you want to throw something in the Padlet there, that'd be great. So now in the next few minutes, we're going to kind of go crazy. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's change our coding tools again. And now what if instead of something in physical space, what if we used some even more abstract symbols just on paper, or in this case, on the screen? Uh, what if we started doing something with some geometric shapes? So here on the screen are showing up some shapes and we could continue to use these signals uh, to have us make some kind of movement like stomping or clapping like we've already done before. But we could also use just the very physical movements of our mouths and our vocal cords to say just the names of the shapes. So even if we just said this and thought of the rhythm, let's try that. Let's um, do that with me. And again, if somebody's in the room with you, invite them to play along. So if we just said circle, circle, square, square, circle, circle, square, square, circle, circle, square, square. Wonder if we could clap that. Let's think of the rhythm of that and clap that rhythm. Circle, circle, square, square, circle, circle, square, square, circle, circle, square, square. And if you're thinking that this is very much like syllabication, it's exactly like syllabication. And when you really start thinking about language and our spoken language and the syllables that we use, there is a very natural rhythm uh, and pattern, even just to speaking. Um, that the, once you kind of tune your ears to that, you'll hear it all the time now. Um, you know, so what I just have to make this comment, Scott, because this was yeah. surprising to me. Like the 
when I counted circle, there's six letters in it. And then uh -huh. when I count square, there's six letters as well. But it's really the syllables that are changing in the word. And I know that when I was young, I used to think big, long words had lots of syllables and short mm -hmm. words didn't. And so that was, that was just something surprising. And so even like counting the number of letters, and now we're, we're talking about how coding can be done. And even all the vocabulary that often kids have to learn, maybe part of that vocab, the, that vocabulary development can come in just playful coding activities. Bev, are you implying that maybe there's math and science in reading and language? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course maybe. There <laughs> of course there is. Yeah. There's yeah, some absolutely. steamy, there's some steamy <laughs> things happening when we're even doing spelling and things like that as we articulate that. And and I think that's what helps just remind us that so much of learning is interconnected. Um, mm -hmm. It just depends on what we're aware of and what we're trying to highlight. Absolutely. Okay, so, um, and uh, Chris, you've already clicked. So what if we tried to make that representation, that rhythmic representation with our toothpicks? And I, I just put it on the screen to avoid having to do it on uh, switching cameras again. So it'd be two little ones for circle, 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 square, square. So it'd be, yeah, circle, circle, square, square. Yeah. Um, and, and not to give privilege to any one language, what if we switched languages? What if we did that in Spanish? So um, my Spanish is not that great, but I'm pretty sure it would sound very different. It would be circulo, circulo, cuadrado, cuadrado, circulo, circulo, cuadrado, cuadrado. Um, I think that's what it would be. And if, if I am goofing that up, please let me know in the chat. Um, so that it sounds that sounds more like a, a waltz kind of feel. Circulo, circulo, quadrado, quadrado, circulo, circulo, quadrado, quadrado. Um, so uh, I know we've already messed with this a little bit with the toothpicks, but also what if we had a double pattern going on just with geometric shapes? So um, what if we went back to just circle and circle and square, square, but we added colors in? So now we have uh, representing different things by different colors. So let's see what this sounds like if we just vocalize this, if we just said green circle, yellow circle, green square, yellow square, green circle, Go yellow circle, green square, yellow square, green. In fact, I'm kind of. I want to. I want to make it more rhythmic. Green circle, yellow circle, green square, yellow square, green circle, yellow circle, green square, red square. And we're almost getting Dr. Seussish, right? You know, <laughs> one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish kind of thing. Well, maybe um, those patterns are what helps that that book be such a beloved thing is like you absolutely. feel that in the sounds of it. Right. And so I know a lot of our TK um, kindergarten, first grade teachers are, you know, in the standards are patterning A, B patterns. So look at the patterns that are just on the screen right there. You've got if you're just looking at shapes, it's an A, A, B, B pattern. If you're looking at the colors, it's an A, B, A, B pattern. And if you combine those, you get a really interesting rhythm that maybe we could make with our toothpicks. I don't know, maybe we could do that. Um, now I wanna jump, uh, and I told you we're gonna go crazy. We're kind of running out of time and I wanna take one more play break. So what if now, instead of shapes, what if we jump to just some found objects? So. I looked around my yard earlier and I found some stuff. I have, um, let me get that so you can see it. I have some uh, oak tree that's been dropping acorns all over the place. Um, so I, we, I could say this, I could say acorn, 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 acorn. Uh, what if I did, 
Acorn, acorn, acorn pen. Acorn, acorn, acorn pen. Acorn, acorn, acorn pen. How about pen, acorn, acorn pen. Pen, acorn, acorn pen. Um, I have some leaves here. Uh, this one's fun. That's a sycamore. What a great word to say, sycamore. <laughs> and I have a maple leaf and I have an oak leaf. And so if I kept in my, my patterns of four, what if I did sycamore, maple, oak, oak, sycamore, maple, oak, oak. Sycamore, maple, oak, oak. Sycamore, maple, oak, oak. Or what if I played with some snacks? What if we did popcorn chip? Chip popcorn. <laughs> so popcorn chip, chip popcorn, popcorn chip, chip popcorn. So here's a code. And we can pull a rhythm out of that. We can play with different objects. We could play with different sizes, different orientations. Um, I could break chips. Um, it probably won't break very nicely. Oh, look at that. Now I got <laughs> popcorn, popcorn chip, 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 popcorn. <laughs> uh, there's all kinds of things we could do. So we're gonna do one more play break and we're kind of short on time. So we'll make this four minutes and just pull some things, just grab whatever's around you and see if you can, it could be silverware, it could be things out of the kitchen, it could be things out of your closet. It could be just things on your desk that are sitting around you if you're in your classroom. Yeah, Lori, you're re recognizing that three, two, one with the sycamores and the maples and the oaks, perfect. All right, so we'll do another quick play break and then we'll wrap this up. So play and have fun and put things in the Padlet. All right, let's come back together. And again, if you have some ideas or variations or extensions that you wanna share either in the chat or in the Padlet, that would be great. Um, wanna just respect everybody's time and show you one more thing and that is um, a real simple rhythm and just kind of kind of highlighting all the places we've been today so a real simple rhythm is just clap and it's actually the first one we did um, so one two three and four 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 so Chris, if you want to show that slide, here's a bunch of different ways that we could code that simple rhythm. There it is. So the first one is the toothpicks. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. We could do square, square, circle, square, square, square. Circle, square, colors, green, green, yellow, green, 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 yellow, green. We could use objects like pen, pen, pencil, pen, oak, oak, maple, oak, chip, chip, popcorn, chip. So there's lots of different ways we could code or use objects or symbols uh, whether they be physical or abstract, to represent some different rhythms. So I just kind of wanted to share that with you of lots of different ways that, that we as humans and children, as producers of sounds and rhythms and patterns, could really represent things that they want to communicate. So Scott, we have a question in the chat. Wouldn't and be a rest since it's not an object? Um, let's see. Wouldn't and be a rest since it's not an object? So if we go back to that slide, um, 
I'm I'm thinking I was thinking simply of syllabication. So um yeah, I guess you could do a rest. I was thinking of just vocalizing the physical, the, the actual English words for those objects and counting the syllables and kind of finding the rhythm in that. But yes, and here's an actual an interesting, another interesting I think I kind of thought about is there's a very close parallel between a musical rest and Laura, obviously you have some musical background, but a rest means don't do anything. Which there's is a code. Math which is a code, but it's also, <laughs> it's a huge idea. And it's such a huge idea that there's a number for don't do anything or don't count anything. And that is zero. And zero historically is the last symbol that we ever came up with as human beings because it was such a big idea. We need a symbol that represents nothing. And that's a big idea. So, but we're running out of time, but what a great question. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. So we have had some steamy moments that have happened, some science. I'd love for you guys to put any science, technology, engineering, math, art that you have seen. So throw it in the chat. Um, some ideas could be vibrations, like understanding vibrations and the physics of sound, um, the different types of instruments possibly that we've used. We've used our voice, we've used our hands. Um, there's lots of patterns. We've done fractions. We have done um, measuring. We could measure vibrations. If you were able to, um, you can use tools like um, apps on your phones. So there's lots of fun, steamy moments that can happen with music and coding. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and playing along. Um, you can have access to a one page activity um, on our website. Um, as, as well as register for the next hands online webinar, which is sewing and steam. So we're going to just explore some sewing and steam. Feel free to contact Scott or myself if you have any further questions or comments. We're always happy to keep the conversations going around steam and making and playful learning. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe. <laughs>